Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're looking at the pretty cool add-on known as Animax. This is a procedural animation add-on that is made available by the folks at Monami. Now, these guys are the same folks that created the Flare Wizard. So just in case you want to take a look at this, you can simply go over to the link in the description and grab it. Now, this tool is for those who like to make some motion graphics style kind of animation, just in case you want to do something that is quite complex, but you don't want to spend so much time doing this. Or let's say you want to animate multiple objects or you want to simply animate some ease in, some ease out, and you actually want to do these things really quick without spending so much time on keyframing and getting that perfect motion, this tool is definitely going to handle this one for you. So without further ado, we're simply going to go over to Blender and take a look at how this actually works. So with Blender simply open right here, all you need to do is go over to Edit, go over to Preference and do the installation. And once you do that, working with this is super easy. All you need to do is press N on the keyboard and you notice that you have Animax right here. Now, this is all you know you need to actually get that beautiful thing happening. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this works basically with collections. So if you have like a motion graphic text that you want to animate, you need to make sure that they're in a collection. If you have something as simple as Susan, so let's actually grab Susan right there. You also need to make sure that this Susan is in a collection. Now, how do you work with this? First things first, put this into a collection and then you need to select that collection. Now in this case, I would simply work with collection number two and I'll go ahead and close this one off. For you to get the motions happening, first of all, you need to select the collection. Make sure that you take this button to turn it on and then click on sort. So depending on the number of objects that you have in a collection, this sort button will go through and sort all of them based off several hierarchy. Of course, we're going to talk about how that one works as this works basically with split object. So once you click on the sort button, the effect drop down actually appears. So what we need to do is just simply click on any of the effects that you want. So let's say we want to get some explode or maybe some shoot or transform or maybe a simple popcorn. We can get that. And once we have that there, let's go ahead and press the playback button and you would notice that we would have this nice animation happening. Now this can actually work for transitioning in and also out. So this one right now is for in. So you can actually select out bounce this all the way back and press the playback button and you notice they have that. So imagine how much time this is going to save you if you want to do something that has to do with a text review, a logo review, things like this. This is definitely going to save you so much time. Now let's quickly talk about the parameters that exist here. So just in case you want to know what these things do, you can actually get a good idea for this. So if we move this all the way to this point, you would notice that we have the start, we have the duration per object, and this is for multiple objects, which we're going to get into. And then you have the distance. So you can actually use this to split or, you know, push this back and forth. If you like to also play with the scaling, you can do that. If you like to play with the rotation, you can also do all of this. If you go all the way up here, we also have seeds. This seeds is randomization based of direction. You can choose what direction you want this to use. If you wanted to use the cursor, you want to use the X, Y, or Z axis, you can simply specify those. And once you change any of this, make sure you hit the refresh button that changes and also refreshes the sorting. So with that said, the time control actually controls a lot of things, all right? So within the time control, you would notice that everything is set to zero. So just in case you want to keyframe this thing yourself or you want to simply control the time yourself, you can easily do this, all right? Look at this bad boy, all right? You can easily do this. And the popcorn is not the only you know, effect that you get all of these beautiful opportunities to work with, you can actually do this with any of them. So let's say we want to take a look at something more robotic. So let's take a look at the transformer. So if we take a look at the transformer, let's bounce this back, press the playback button, just take a look at this. All right. Think about, you know, think about those solid movements going on there. Press the playback button again. Look at that bad boy. Cool. So with this here, you can now start exploring several stuff and with this said let's go ahead and look at something more cool and more interesting so for this one i would simply take this off and then close suzanne now why i'm doing that is because i would like to explore with this tiny cube and what we want to actually achieve is to create some sort of split across this particular cube and use that for some motion graphic disintegration so let's say for example we go over to the split section and i change the collection name here to box okay so that's what we want just simply change the name to box and i will simply click on split the object and once i click on split the object you notice that we have some splitting going on right there now at this point i can actually go back to that collection and turn this off 
and then we can start doing some cool stuff. Now, depending on the number of particles that I want, I can crank this all the way up. And of course, you notice nothing is happening because our subdivision is set to zero. Now, we can also increase that subdivision to get as much debris or particles that we're going for. And if you would like to change the subdivision type, you can also choose to change that subdivision type. Now, I can set this to Cadmo Clack, or I can simply set this to Simple. Now, once I have that there, we can also go in all right and play with the solidify so if you want to add some triangulate you want to add some solidify of course you can go in and do that and we can click and add some thickness to this solidify and of course we can also throw in some cut edge now once we throw in that cut edge right there we can start doing some cool stuff this is for you to be able to preview what's going on you can turn this off you can turn this on and you can also play with the seed all right so depending on how much randomization you want to get you can have these bad boys happening. Now, once you're done with all this stuff, remember, all we have now is a brand new collection and that cube right there. If we simply click on apply, it is going to go ahead and convert all of these tiny pieces into several shards, okay? So once we do that, you can see this beauty. Now with this, if we go over to where we have animate, just simply take a look at this, animate, click on this button, add the box, select that, click this to turn this on, click on the sort to sort everything out and then simply select an effect. And for the most part, I will go ahead and start with something simple. So let's say we want to start with an explode, for example. Now with this, just take a look at what's going to happen. Let's bounce this all the way back, press the playback button and you can see this. Cool. And you can see that explode feature just simply does that. And this works for both text, works for any of the geometries that you have, regardless of anything, you can use this for some very cool stuff. We can also go ahead and change this and let's take a look at the transform and see what we can get with that. Maybe we can get some cool robotic. Oh, right. This looks beautiful. Nice. So we can have this one going. We can bounce this back as well. Press the playback button. Have that happening. You can also play with the duration offset. So depending on what you want, depending on how you would want these animation piece to actually come together, you can do that. And by the way, for those who like to also play with some other ones, you can actually go ahead and have fun working with them. The popcorn on looks pretty cool. So I'm also going to go ahead and press the playback button. We can also make that transition happen outwardly. So we can have this scattered all away. And we can also convert that to be something that happens inwardly. So for anyone who wants to take advantage of these things and you want to work with them, you can go over the link in the description and take a look at these things and see some beautiful stuff that you can create with them. And that's about it. So for those who like to create some very nice motion graphic style looking effect, or maybe you're looking for ways to disintegrate and also have some very smooth transitioning within your text animation, or maybe on any other object they have directly in Blender, this add-on is definitely going to get you from point A to point B. And of course, a huge shout out to the folks at Monami for making this one possible. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.